Hi. OK, this is just a short little bonus video. I spent about an hour tidying up the circuit board, turning this into this. So the remainder of this video is, is just a, a heavy edit down of that work. I don't actually build anything new. So if you want to skip this video, go ahead. There's no new information in here. I just felt it was worth spending the time, particularly cleaning up the control wires around here and, uh, and hiding all these cables underneath. I didn't want to have the board radically changed without an explanation. So if you want to watch it, I hope you find it interesting. OK, so these wires are a bit of a mess, so I'm going to try and uh, clean it up as much as I can. This complexity of circuit, it, it does get very difficult to manage stuff. These power cables I had to replace with um, temporary ones because the LEDs are in the way. OK, these orange wires are the clock lines that are driving the load on the D-type latches for both the pipeline instructions and for the outputs from the ROMs to hold the control lines. So these are the control lines for the LHS and RHS inputs to the ALU. These will eventually end up in pipeline stage one, but I'll leave them here for now. These are the read and write controls. If I can bring them under, that tidies things up quite a bit. These two white wires here are they are load lines for A and B register from the load control. It's actually bugging me a bit that the lower LED here constantly flashes, and that's because when we don't have anything to load, we've just left the control here as zero, and that means that the first line will be active. So I've actually penciled memory writes to be at that address. So next time I'm in the control logic, we need to uh, tweak the code a little bit. Okay, that's right. Now, these are the assert to bus lines. They're going to be a bit tricky. Okay, these chips, the line drivers, have two enable lines. And I'm just switching to use the one on the north side, so that should continue to work right. That's just going to be a slightly easier wire to route up with these two.
Okay, it's not perfect, but that's helped a lot. I'm going to take a brief break before I attack the assert lines for the ALU inputs. These clock and inverted clock lines I'm uh, going to have to leave the way they are. And then these uh, control lines that we're, uh, we're not entirely finished with. We've replaced a lot of the permanent lines which were still these uh, flexible cables with uh, more permanent wires. These ones that are still around are all things that are either still works in progress or they're wires that are connecting between boards and it's uh, get, it's difficult to, uh, to to deal with those readily but I think this is uh, as neat as we're going to get it without a, uh, a large amount of extra effort and obviously particularly the registers I want to move over to PCB fairly quickly so I can uh, a have you know, the full four GPRs and the full five address registers we still need the transfer register but all of that should fit in I think probably the GPRs and the address registers are all going to end up fitting in not a lot more space than uh, than the breadboards currently take up when we've got the full number we know there are at least three sections to the ALU so we're gonna need at least one more breadboard I suspect we'll need more okay so that's as tidy as it's going to get for now. We're ready for uh, the next stage in ALU building. Okay, well, if you made it this far, thanks for watching.